God bless everybody today. It is July 29th of 2024 and this is a quick Middle East update. Uh, we've had some harsh rhetoric from Erdogan of Turkey in the last uh, 24 to 48 hours and I wanted to just do a quick update and uh, let you know what's going on out here. So Israel has a lot on their plate right now. They've got a front in the south with Palestine and Hamas, and they're trying to figure out how to uh, deal with that and stabilize that battle down there, as well as Hezbollah is breaking out in the north and east above Israel in Lebanon, and that is going to break out soon and potentially turn into an additional war. Now, since... October 7th when Hamas attacked and invaded Israel, kidnapped all those people and killed over a thousand people in Israel. And then we had a proclamation of war against um, Hamas uh, shortly after that on October 9th. Um, we also saw something else happen. We saw a ramping up of Hezbollah between Hezbollah and Israel on October 8th and you started a new conflict there because really nothing had been I mean they've had a number of things happening over there but really it had not ramped up since the Israeli uh, Lebanon war conflict back in 2016 so this has been fairly quiet on a lot of fronts until just recently but now we've also had a, an attack into Golan Heights from Hezbollah, at least that's what everybody thinks has happened here. It killed a number of people, um, children and things on a soccer field and different things like that. And so there's going to be uh, some retaliatory strikes from Israel into Lebanon, into Hezbollah. And we've also had a number of high level uh, ranking officials and military leaders in Lebanon die here recently and so this has been uh, ramping up but the thing I really wanted to bring to your attention is we have uh, new rhetoric from Erdogan that's going to uh, start to ramp this up even more so if you've been following uh, this channel or the news at all you realize that Erdogan is not a big fan of Israel they're their nemesis and we also realize that Erdogan and Turkey are going to be the one that changes the uh, Middle East in the near future and bring a quarter of that um, or basically a quarter of the world in the Middle East into war here in the next year year and a half and so this is extremely important um, Turkish president believes that Hamas is not a terrorist organization. Um, he probably also believes that against Hezbollah also. And so it's going to be interesting to see when Turkey does invade down into Syria, down into Lebanon, through Israel, to Gaza, to Palestine, how he's going to be... Um, looked at when he goes down through there with all these uh, radical different groups and things like Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis and things like that. Now based on everything that we know in the Bible these countries don't really get along but they will unify to uh, destroy Israel and so that's extremely important. So the thing I wanted to bring to your attention is Turkey's Erdogan has threatened to invade Israel, to invade Israel over war in Gaza as a regional tensions grow. And I believe this will be more of a situation problem um, as we move forward because this ramp up between Hezbollah and Israel is also taking place and this is going to break out in a major way soon. So Turkey has been extremely vocal in a number of ways. We've done multiple articles and multiple videos about how Turkey's been threatening Netanyahu and calling him Hitler and how he's basically wanting to go down and help the Palestinian people because they're not getting enough aid. Now you've got this additional front moving in uh, Lebanon and so that's an additional problem. Um, you've also had the Houthis literally attack into Tel Aviv through a drone and so this is all ramping up in front of us. But now Erdogan is literally threatening to potentially um, invade Israel just as they did in Kar. Karabakh and uh, Libya 
and that they will do the same and because he was victorious basically in both of these campaigns he's threatening Israel that it'll end up the same way for them and so I just wanted to bring a little bit of this information to your attention so that you're aware of what's going on out here. Um, it indicates that Jerusalem and Ankara traded sharp barbs on Sunday with President uh, Erdogan seeming to threaten military action against Israel as tensions heated up between Jewish state and the Iranian proxy group Hezbollah. Israel fired back and said that they warned Erdogan that his fate could be akin to the former Sadan Hussein, which was the Iraqi president that was literally hung. And that changed that whole dynamic over there. Actually, it was pretty stable, even though Hassan Hussein was a bad guy. Um, he kept the area stable. Once he was removed and hung, that whole region fell apart. And so every time, even if you remove a dictator, there's a vacuum that occurs and that has to be filled by somebody. And usually there's not good players to fill these vacuums and so it ends up being bad. Um, indicates that Erdogan is falling in the indicates that Israel states that Erdogan is falling in the footsteps of Saddam Hussein by threatening to attack Israel. He should remember what happened there and how it ended by hanging. And so they're basically saying, look, you might end up in the same place, Erdogan, if you try this. And so this isn't this rhetoric is getting extreme and this is going to bowl over into a war as it always does. Israel Foreign Minister Israel Katz wrote in a post on X in which he linked a photograph of Erdogan and Hussein. The Turkish Foreign Minister on Monday compared Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to the World War II German Nazi dictator Adolf Hitler in a post on X. Just as genocidal Hitler ended, so will genocidal Netanyahu, the post stated. Just as the genocidal Nazis were held accountable, those who tried to destroy the Palestinians will also be held accountable, it added. Humanity will stand with the Palestinians. Turkish Foreign Minister Hakan Fiden wrote on X that Erdogan had become the voice of humanity's conscience. Oh, man, is that saying a mouthful. Yeah, like Erdogan is the humanity's conscience as he's genociding the Armenians. He's genociding the Kurds. And he's getting ready to go down into Iraq, or in, yeah, into Iraq, Syria, down into Lebanon, down into Palestine, and down into Egypt, and all these other things. And before he's even done, he's going to remove Iran as a power. That is a mouthful to say. But anyway, um, the international community doesn't get much, and so this is why we're here. And that's one of the reasons Trump and a lot of us aren't really big on the UN because if you look at the UN's um, mandates, a lot of times Israel is always um, getting the shaft, basically. So um, it's just the way it works, guys. Nobody likes Israel. Um, it says here, international Zionist circles, especially Israel, who want to surpass uh, the righteous voice are in great alarm. History ended the same way for all genociders and their supporters. Well, maybe you ought to think about that, uh, Erdogan, because you're a genocider also. Erdogan said earlier on Sunday that Turkey might enter Israel, an invasion, as it has done in Libya and Karbaka, or Karabaka. Uh, but did not specify the type of intervention he was suggesting. Now, I want to suggest something here. And I've talked about this many times. For Erdogan to get to Palestine, he has no ability to get there other than through Israel. Because if you go down into Syria, down into Lebanon, 
then the only way to get to Palestine from there is to go between Jerusalem and Jordan, which means he has to go through Israel. So to help the Palestinian people, he doesn't have a choice. He can't really go around and fly everything in and try to deal with that on an air type transport system basis is not going to work so he's going to need armor and that's going to have to be driven down through there he can't go around jordan um, and different things like that he he's going to go down into lebanon he has to help hezbollah and the lebanese people as well as as that breaks out as well as he has to go down into palestine and help um Hamas and the Palestinian people. Now, how will these radical groups like Hamas and Hezbollah interact with Turkey? And how will Assad deal with um, Turkey as they're trying to normalize um, their uh, relationships? And that's always been on the rocks. And so will Assad actually allow Turkey to go down into his country? Or will that be also an additional front of war that Erdogan will have to deal with before he gets down into Lebanon. The article goes on and says Erdogan has been a fierce critic of Israel's military campaign into Gaza to destroy Hamas. Began discussing the war during his speech praising his country's defense industry. Erdogan states we must be very strong so that Israel can't do these ridiculous things to Palestine just like when we entered Karabakh just like when we entered Libya, we might do similar to them. And he's talking about Israel. Erdogan told a meeting to his ruling AK party in his hometown of Rice. There is no reason why we cannot do this. Let me restate that. There is no reason why we cannot do this. And so then you have to make the question, is he going to leave NATO? to deal with the Palestinian Lebanese problem because he doesn't want to be in NATO and he doesn't align with um, them anyway and he's a dictator just like Putin just like Xi just like all these other guys so we have to ask our question is he going to leave NATO soon is he going to go into um, Syria start down a uh, campaign of invasion down into Lebanon as well as Palestine I believe he will do that before the end of this year um, but we're starting to see this ramp up in rhetoric as we move into the next few months um, into the end of this year he indicates that we must be strong so that we can take these steps so he's trying to get everybody unified erdogan added in a television address so he's he's addressing the nation before they go in and do anything so he's getting all of his stuff ready another thing that erdogan has to deal with here is the uh, delivery of the f-16 packages and the jets uh, from the united states and so he's going to get all this stuff in place before he breaks out because he doesn't want to be shorted on these different fronts and things and he needs those jets to control the airspace over all this uh, area over uh, these areas they're getting ready to evade go down into syria lebanon through israel uh, which Israel has a huge air force and so air superiority is going to be extremely important over there and so he needs to shore this up before uh, that happens. The article also indicates that Erdogan's AK party representatives did not respond to calls asking for more details on Erdogan's statement. Israel did not immediately make any comment but did later and the president appeared to be referring to past actions by Turkey. So as I've been saying for a while guys, the white horseman of er uh, Revelation is Erdogan and he's going to break out and uh, he's going to bring a quarter of the world into war before we start breaking trumpets and moving into an antichrist phase. And so we need to be watching Turkey. Turkey is the main catalyst that's going to bring the uh, Middle East into war which is going to then reverberate throughout the uh, world. 
uh, you have a market meltdown getting ready to happen. You have an inversion of a real curve between the 2 and 10 year bond happening. And um, you have a lot of things going on at the end of the month with a Fed meeting and different things like that. So basically everything is going to start breaking down in the next four to five months. And as we walk into the first of the year, things are going to get extremely crazy out here. So God bless and have a great night. I just wanted to inform you of this. Uh, please find that open door. Please find Jesus and uh, get right with God and get your oil in your lamp because we have some time to get through this.